Hello and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Justice for All. In the last episode, we concluded the first part of the trial of Maximilian Galactica. Um, and in this episode, we're going to get into the second half. So let's get right into it. December 29th, 11.54 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. Sweetie, you have to believe me. I didn't go anywhere near that crime scene. So then, where were you when the murder took place? We talked about it yesterday, remember? I was in the ringmaster's room. And while you were there, it was the ringmaster who left the room, right? Exactly. He told me to wait in the room because he would be right back. That's when the ringmaster headed to the scene of the crime, right? That's what it seems like. But the ringmaster must have been wearing Max's costume, right? Oh, sweetie, I just remembered. I went straight to the ringmaster's room still dressed in my stage clothes. But when I got there, I went ahead and took the costume off. Which means... It means that the ringmaster could have taken his costume and went out looking like Max. Fabulous. That's a fabulously possible possibility. <laughs> well done, Nick. However, sweetie, why would the ringmaster want to dress up like me? Isn't that a bit strange? Hmm. If you think about it, all they found at the scene of the crime was my silk hat. What about my cloak? Where did that go? Double, hmm. Well, Max, I never thought of that. You should be a detective or something. Well, I was never quite sure what to be when I grew up. Magician or president? You have no idea how hard it was to make a decision. That's really cool. Fabulous. This mystery just keeps getting deeper. Alright, December 29th, 12.06pm District Court, courtroom number 2. Let's rematch against Von Karma. Now that everyone is back, let's get started. The court is now back in session. Ms. Von Karma, please proceed with the prosecution's case. Very well. I will now call my next witness. A pitiful clown with the unfortunate distinction of having seen the entire thing. Will La Mr. Lawrence Curls please take stand? Lawrence Curls? Why did you just call him a pitiful clown? Lawrence Curls. I don't know the I don't know if that's also supposed to be a pun, but I don't get that one either. The witness will state his name and occupation for the court record. Is she gonna whip him? Yeah, there you go. Name and occupation. Will the witness please inform the court why he is speaking autobi autobiographical gibberish? Uh, oh, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just not used to being in the court. I've never been in a courtroom my whole life. I wasn't quite sure what joke is best suited to this type of occasion. What in the world are you talking about? You're in a grand hall of justice, not some comedy club. Since it's easy to see your occupation, please state your name for the court. Oh uh, yeah, maybe this joke is okay. Mom, do I have to wear pants? The sign only says no shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> good one. Yeah, go figure. That's about the reception I that I gave him. Okay, okay. How about this? Have you met my practicologist, Doctor Seymour Butts? How's that one? That was that was actually kind of funny. <laughs> but a couple of clowns were. Oh God, I just can't read that fast. Your name, Lawrence Curls, professional funny man, also known as Mo the Clown. You witnessed the scene around 10:15 p.m. the day of the murder. Correct. Yes, yes it is. Very well, Mr. Curls, will you please testify to what you saw that evening? A rabbi, a priest, and a Rastafarian walk into the plaza. Without the humor, please. Okay. Aw, uh, poor Mo can't be his normal stoogy self in court. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's a murder case. I don't know why he's trying to be so jovial, but... I know, I know. I'm not the greatest comedian in the world. I haven't been able to make people laugh for 10 years. No matter what I say, all I get in return is a vacant stare and polite applause. Since no one ever laughs at my jokes, I've taken to laughing at them myself. It's a bad habit, but hey, at least I'm trying. Imagine my predicament. 
I'm a clown who can't make people laugh. I'm almost useless. But I keep trying. I even try to come up with jokes just for today. But this atmosphere is very nerve-wracking. I decided to try making everyone laugh. Seriously, everyone. What do you think of me? How am I doing? That had nothing to do with the case. What the hell? Uh, aren't we the ones supposed to be asking the questions here? Witness. Huh? We will listen to your call for help after the court proceedings are over. Von Karma is being surprisingly accommodating. I just thought she'd whip and tell. Thus, please stick to the facts of this case. Really? You'll really hear me out? Well, I'll make sure that one of my staff will be your straight man later. Thank you, thank you. I can't wait. Poor Gumshoe. <laughs> Now that that's settled, shall we begin once again with a testimony? Of course we can. I'll talk for as long as you want. Which is preferably brief, um, but we'll see. The night of the murder, after the practice was over, I went straight back to my room. You have no idea how tired I was that night. I was pooped. I thought I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced out the window. That's when I saw two silhouettes. They were a bit far away, though. It was the ringmaster, and he was with Max, who was wearing his cloak. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clonked the ringmaster over the head. That's very interesting. If this eyewitness account is to be believed, I have enough to pass judgment right now. Of course you can. There's no way that this account can be criticized. However, the witness is a bit... How do you say... Off-kilter. Almost like he has some sort of atmosphere of guilt surrounding him. That must be because of my insincere smile. Mr. Wright, please begin the defense's cross-examination. Uh, yes, your honor. Nick, you've got to find some kind of contradiction in this testimony. I know that. Mr. Wright? Your honor? I'm afraid that if you push this witness too far, it would bring disaster upon the court. Thus, I sincerely hope you are not going to engage in a pointless, ratter, a pointless saber rattling. I understand, Your Honor. If he causes this clown to stray away from the facts, I'll hold you responsible. Why am I responsible? I'm not the one with the corny jokes. Alright, so it looks like we got to be careful with um, what we talk to him about. Or what we press him on. Okay. Oops. Yeah, this is what I was curious about. Why did you glance out the window? You just happened to glance out of the window? You could say that. You could also say I peeked, stared, glimpsed, peeped, eyeballed. Mr. Curls. Oh, I guess synonyms aren't allowed either. What should I do? I wonder if I should press him, press him further on this issue. Keep pressing. Exactly why did you look out of your window that night? Why... Why? Clans don't need a reason to look out their windows, do they? That's not really what I meant. I meant that, well, when we spoke yesterday, once I tucked myself into bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant thump. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You forgot? Your Honor, the witness looked out of his window upon hearing a loud sound. He did not just simply glance out of his window that night. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that thump, didn't I? That's not something you just forget to mention. Um, yeah, what she said. I believe it would be best if Mo were to revise his testimony. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Curls, please revise your testimony. Alright, this should start turning the tables in our favor. Pretty huge noise outside the window, and that's what made me look outside. Alright, let's press on that. What was the sound like? Well, I guess it kind of sounded like... Hmm, I guess you could say... Mr. Curls, may the court remind you that humor is unnecessary. Oh, how'd you know I was going to make a joke? I guess that the sound sounded like a... I suppose it sounded like someone getting hit with something very hard. Yep, that's what it sounded like, honestly. Someone getting hit. What then? You went to look out, you went to look out the window and you saw... 
Mm. Two silhouettes. Ringmaster. Flunked over the head. Let's press on this. You say you saw the ringmaster get clonked over the head? Yes, I did. It's the climax of my story. He really does enjoy the completely random non sequitur. What would you say the victim was struck with? You mean the weapon? I have no idea. A weapon wasn't found at the murder scene, right? That's not what I meant. You did say you did see everything, didn't you? Well, I, uh... Yeah, I suppose I did. Wait, no, I didn't. I didn't see a weapon. Mo, did you or did you not see the crime of murder committed that night? I will not permit you to harass my witness in this matter. You literally whipped him twice in this episode. What are you talking about? You better have an excellent reason for attacking this poor, poor clown. Because if you don't, you know what is waiting for you. A nice penalty. Isn't this a bit melodramatic? And that is a huge penalty. I literally can't survive another one of those if... Am I going to penalize? So what will it be then, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have any clear basis to believe that my witness did not see the crime? Uh, we can we can tank one of these hits. So let's just stick with our guts. I've got a great reason to make my claim. And I suppose you'll be telling us all about that great reason. Of course I will. The reason is... The witness's very own testimony. What is the meaning of that, Mr. Wright? Mo said that he heard, he heard something... He heard a sound like a thump of someone getting hit. Hmm, he did say that. However, Mo just stated the following under oath. I kept watching them and all of a sudden Max clonked the ringmaster over the head. If Mo is to be believed when he says he looked out the window upon hearing a sound... There's no way that he could have seen Max clonk anyone. I I have no idea what Moe's like dialogue is. He was talking about like a cry, a clown being sent to prison in 1972. I'm gonna have to analyze that. Like I have like in my own time, I have no idea what he's talking about there. Mr. Curls, how do you respond to Mr. Wright's assessment? They didn't commit. These clowns promptly escaped from a maximum security clown car. Is he like, this is getting kind of creepy. Like, is he admitting to his own escape from prison or something? Mr. Curls, are you reciting the C-Team theme to anger this court? Oh, I don't know what C-Team is, but okay. I, I guess it's a reference to something, and I'm just not big on all things pop culture. No, no, no. I'm just telling for time while I jog my memory. Great job, Nick. Well, these types of witnesses always seem to have a very selective memory. You just have to peel back the layers of the clown makeup to find the truth. Well, uh... Oh, you're back from your jog? Well, it pretty much happened the way I said. Pretty much. When I looked out my window that night, the ringmaster was already face down in the snow. The prosecution helped me fill in the gaps in my statement. Von... Von Karma! Tampering with witnesses again. So now you are saying that you did not see the defendant clunk the ringmaster. Y yes when I looked out my window, the ringmaster had already checked out. Checked out? Yep. He was on the permanent... I did not read what that said. Mr. Curls. Your Honor. You did not witness the actual crime. However, you still say that you saw the criminal, correct? Yes, exactly. The ringmaster was slumped over and I saw someone's silhouette next to him. Very well, then please testify to the silhouette you saw. I expect the truth. And if I catch even a hint of a joke from you, I will put you in a holding cell until you learn court etiquette. Got it? Got it. Alright, his testimony, the silhouette. We'll pick up right here on the next episode. I hope that, uh, for his sake, um, I hope that Mo plays down the shenanigans a little bit. I'd hate to see him get whipped by Von Karma and hate to see him being thrown into a holding cell by the judge. Um, but yeah. We will see how he does in the next episode. So until then, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you then.